Hello everyone, this is Ronnie and in this video I want to talk about some of the current reactions that we're getting to the situation with the coronavirus. Um, what we're seeing right now, if you go on, well if I go on my social media or just even speak to friends and different people, we're getting a lot of different reactions and there's a lot of distrust around towards the numbers that are coming out, the statements coming out from the medical system. Obviously there's a lot of um, conspiracy theory stuff coming out there as well that uh, this has all been caused by Bill Gates and 5G as part of it. I don't believe in any of that side of it that Bill Gates has created the coronavirus or, or, that, uh, or that anyone's created it. I think it happened by accident by accident because we are still allowing people to kill and eat animals. Unbelievably, we're still allowing that to happen. Um, but anyway, so if you do that, if you're going to kill and eat animals and have farms and have animals all together, infectious disease happens. We've known that for hundreds of years and we're still not stopping it. We're still not doing anything about it. It's silly. It's the nature of addiction. It's denial. People being addicted to these uh, foods. Um, so that's kind of the problem. But uh, apart from that, we have this situation where numbers are coming out, data is coming out. Now, supposedly, coronavirus kills more people than anything else right now. Um, heart disease, cancer, and all the other things. And uh, there's, doc you know, videos are coming out from the hospitals of all the stuff that's happening. And uh, there is part of me that believes that um, there's a few things. If you want to get a population of people to act in a particular way and you need people to stay at home, you're probably more likely as the media and the government to kind of make out that everything's worse than it is. Because if you don't, then people don't take any action. And people are like, well, why are we bothering if only, like, if barely anyone dies from this? So you have to make out, like, everyone's dying from it. And it, So just to get the public to take action, anyone who has stage four cancer who is about to die, they get COVID. Oh, they died of COVID, you know. It's, it's, that's what a lot of us seem to be thinking, that a lot of people are just being reported as they died of this um, when many many people had a, a, another issue something else that they were dying from um, so so maybe that is the case maybe the numbers are inflated a little bit maybe the danger is inflated a little bit I don't, I, I don't really know I can't really speak about that but I've, I've come, you come across videos and different things coming out of doctors saying why are we being told to put COVID on the death certificate when we don't know for sure that it was you know it's kind of a weird situation so anyway why are people mistrustful towards the medical establishment towards the government uh, the media and so on because there's just been a huge history of cover-ups and lies when it comes especially uh, in the hell in the world of health and everyone knows something's going wrong everyone knows something's been pulled over their eyes now I don't really believe strongly in like conspiracy theories like this is a this is a big plan someone planned this I don't think this was planned um, really but I don't know if anyone could plan it I, I actually believe more so that a lot of the conspiracy theories that people tend to buy into are probably um, the, the, those are the conspiracy and the conspiracy is that the Russians the Chinese, they want you to be scared of 5G they want you to you know, they they want you to believe um, that your government is trying to control you and is against you and uh, all that, you know, and that your country's terrible and Russia's better or something, you know um, they whatever, um, and they probably funded Trump's election and all that stuff, <laughs> probably, but, and, and they probably funded Brexit too. Um, but reg regardless, uh, there's been a long history, specifically in the health movement. Um, the, the big thing I think about is things like 
how long it took for scurvy to be accepted as people aren't eating enough fruit. Like, okay, we call it vitamin C deficiency, but we call it vitamin C deficiency because we don't want to accept that we are a fruit-eating species, that we need fruit to be healthy, that our body is anatomically designed to consume fruit as its diet, and that when we move away from that, ill health happens predictably every single time. And specifically, when people go on a ship away and don't have any fruit and don't have any vegetables, uh, they got scurvy, which is a vitamin C deficiency, technically, but actually it's a fruit deficiency because we should be eating fruit as a diet. So it is a deficiency of fruit. Okay, technically a vitamin C deficiency, but the reason we get vitamin C deficiency, other herbivores don't, other plant eaters don't, fruit eaters do. It's mostly just the fruit eating apes that get, um, can get vitamin C deficiency, uh, fruit deficiency. That wasn't accepted for hundreds of years by the medical establishment. Now I want you to imagine this, a disease that was killing, you know, killed millions of people basically, scurvy, huge amounts of people um, died, died and suffered from it. Let, probably not millions, maybe not millions died, but millions suffered from it. And um, little witch doctors and herbalists and little, you know, kind of, the little grandmother in the village that would help people out with stuff. She, if, if she came across someone with this, she'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, you just need to eat some of these berries and things like that. Here's a few things, we'll make this thing. And gave it to them and they recovered. And they recovered because these berries and different and whatever they put in the concoction just happened to be high in vitamin C. They'd worked that out over thousands of years probably. They'd seen this before and they gave it to people and, um, and it worked. And the Native Americans knew what it was and different people knew what, what it was. Did the medical establishment, would they accept that? No, they wouldn't accept that. Why? Because it's not something that they can control. It's, it basically is not something they can control. It doesn't further their power. Um, and, and that's kind of the problem with the medical system, is that the solution to most of the diseases is a change of lifestyle, and they have no power to make people change their lifestyle. They, they, they have no power to do that. So they don't have a solution in their eyes. Because we can't, we can't force people to change their diet. We, we can give them the option, but most people aren't going to, quite frankly, because they are completely addicted to it, and they will not accept that their diet is the problem. Just like a lot of people, most people in our society won't accept that diet is the problem. If people get fat, they don't even accept that diet is the problem. They're like, oh, I just, I need to exercise more. It's like, but really? Like, people can't, people cannot accept it. They cannot accept it. It's because of denial, which is connected with addiction. And if you still think that cooked food and animal products and all these foods are, still, are good for you, it's because you're addicted to them. 100%. 100% It's because you're addicted to them. You're showing the signs of addiction. You're in complete denial. You cannot accept that uh, these foods are the problem. They're not the solution to your health. They are the problem. So, um, in saying that, most people have a pretty strong, you know, immunity to these foods and can live a, a normal life with them, but not at the at a good potential of their health and inevitably causing disease over time. So, it's no wonder that people are skeptical, to be honest, towards the the, the media mostly the scientific establishment, the medical establishment, when it comes to health issues. Because we know there's something up. There's something wrong. Why are, why are people unhealthy when we have all the technology? Technology gets better. People are still getting less healthy. There's all these drugs out there. The pharmaceutical companies have incredible amounts of money to put into research. They do great research. They have great scientists. They're not finding the solutions. Every decade we got told 
this, the cure to cancer is around the corner. We just need a bit more money. The cure to cancer is around the corner. Just donate a little bit more. And all they did was build up hundreds of millions of pounds, these cancer charities, of, of cash. And they've still not got a solution to cancer. Why? Because the problem is that people cause cancer with their lifestyle. But that's not something that they can control. We can't control people. You certainly can't tell people to have good habits. I mean, people aren't going to follow that. We can get people addicted to things and then keep them on it, but there's not much we can do about changing people's diet and lifestyle. So if that became the conversation, all of a sudden the medical establishment loses its power. Because when everyone accepts that they don't have the answer and the solution for most of the disease, but they do have for some things, um, then they lose their power, their esteem, their prestige, the money that goes into it, the money goes into funding uh, cancer research, heart disease research, diabetes research, arthritis. If all that money just stopped, because we all of a sudden accepted, there's no point in doing any of that research. It's caused by lifestyle, it'll only be changed by lifestyle change. All of a sudden, the medical establishment, the whole thing starts to collapse. Because that's what it's all based on, all the funding, the money they get, because we were meant to, to some degree, we believe that they know what they're doing, that they've got the science to tell us so. But people are losing faith in that because it's just not the truth. And they know it's not the truth. And they actually tell us it's not the truth. Like, that's the thing, it's not, none of this is conspiracy. It's, they, they say that chronic disease is caused by lifestyle. They say it as well. But people don't want to accept it because people are addicted to the foods and the lifestyle that they have. Just like people were addicted to cigarettes. It's taken a long time for people to start to accept that cigarettes are bad for you. And even cigarette smokers will still be like, eh, well, whatever, you die when you die, and blah, blah, blah. And I'll probably be more likely to get hit by a car, or whatever, you know? So um, it's, it's no wonder that people don't, don't have uh, faith in that anymore. But the one thing that they do have solutions to are infectious diseases, like this situation. That's why this has been blown up so massively, to make everyone remember you know, we're the powerful, trusted, we're the people you need to come and see, we have the answers, we're the medical system, you know, we're the hospitals, the doctors, whatever. That they've got all the answers. When we know they don't. And that a humble YouTuber like myself has more answers for the average person with, with some of the average problems out there. Because the average doctor doesn't know that we can reverse heart disease, diabetes, all these things. Like, simple stuff. Lifestyle change. Diet change. Eating a diet that is in line with your physical anatomical design. Not rocket science. So, a fruit diet will help a lot of people. Huge amounts of people. And then there'll be a small amount of people left over that have genetic conditions, that have uh, infectious diseases, that have trauma and, and injury, and they can be dealt with by the medical system. But the medical system would shrink so much because it'd be a tiny amount of people that they would be um, looking after if we instead had had um, a life a lifestyle change, a health, a real health service where we where we put people on a health program where they went into the hospital and it was like, okay, oh, you got heart disease, right? Okay, well, we're, gonna, we're not going to serve you for the duration of time you're in the hospital. We're not going to serve you the food that causes heart disease. So this is what heart disease is. You caused it yourself. It was your fault. You caused it with your diet. It wasn't entirely your fault because you didn't actually know. Um, and no one probably ever told you. So it's not really your fault, but it is your responsibility. Uh, you could have researched it, you didn't. Most people wouldn't. So, uh, and the media didn't support that, and the news didn't support whatever. Um, but the thing is that, that I don't know how many people would make the change, you know? How many people would make the change? It'd be interesting to see if tomorrow every single person that had heart disease was told why it happened and they had to change their diet, that was the only solution. 
how many would change? Probably like 0.1%, unfortunately. A very small percent. Um, but put people on a program, send the food out to them, make it really easy for them, put them in a place that they can stay in the same place for a while. Maybe more people would do it, who knows. Um, but that's not medical, you know. It's not anything to do with medicine. Um, so, so I just feel like this whole situation is like the medical whole thing is like, right, this is our chance to show our power, our authority, you know, <laughs> like, and, and then as soon as you're like, well, people should eat healthier to avoid this, it, oh no, no, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you change your diet, you can still die of COVID-19, maybe, and, and I don't know if we've got, we've not got enough information to know that yet, but they're just saying that. Maybe it is the case if people are eat healthier that they won't get it, or they won't die from it. And supposedly 50% of the people that get it have no symptoms. Well, why is that? Is it because these people are healthier? Is it because they don't have chronic disease? Is it because their immune system isn't being suppressed and destroyed um, by chronic disease? by lifestyle so but right now the one thing we're trying to do is stop the spread of it everyone's locking down everything's locked down um, and that should stop the spread of it and um, meanwhile we're just causing huge amounts of fear it seems and maybe that's justified um, but um, People are looking for some sense of proportion. You know, well, look at how many people die of heart disease. Look at how many people die of diabetes, but we don't make a big deal about that. It's true. And then other people come back, no, no, look, COVID is going up and it's now higher than heart disease and you're silly and all that. And I'm like, well, if we want real proportion, real proportion, let's take heart disease. Okay, so COVID's now at 1,800 people a day. Heart disease across the world um, I don't know I can't I saw some statistic I think it was in the US per day 1800 deaths coronavirus 1700 deaths heart disease so coronavirus is harder, higher than heart disease now yeah however heart disease is multiplied by 365 multiplied by a hundred years that's this that's the real proportion that heart disease has been killing this unbelievable amount of people for a huge amount of time. The reason we don't, not that bothered about it, heart disease, whatever, um, is, be is because people are so addicted to their diet. But even the heart disease doctors can't accept it. Oh yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, it's caused by meat, but you know, you can still eat meat. It's all right. Like what? Do, that doesn't make any sense. It's oh yes, yeah, it's, it's caused by you know saturated fat but you know don't, don't worry still eat saturated fat well in fact we'll serve it to you come into the hospital we'll give it to you here you go have a menu here's you can have a burger you can have what you come into the hospital for heart disease they give you the stuff they know causes heart disease no that's that, none of that makes any sense unless we're dealing with people with severe addiction denial that's what everyone is on their diet totally you know in denial fruit is the only food you cannot get addicted to, maybe vegetables as well. I think you can pretty much get addicted to almost everything else, to some degree. But fruits, you cannot addict yourself to fruits. They are our food. They don't have any neurotoxic, any stimulating aspect to them. They don't stimulate. They stimulate our eyes, our senses more than our taste buds in our system. You look at a dragon fruit, an amazingly beautiful fruit. You can taste it and it's like, it's nothing. It's not really got much flavor. But that's, the, that's what fruit is, you know. It's not stimulating. Anyway, I just wanted to put out some thoughts. I don't know, I just feel this YouTube channel is a place for me to sort of communicate ideas and, and put things together. I'm not here to be your doctor and tell you what to do, right? I, and it, and I want to believe all the numbers that are coming out. I'd want to believe, but to some degree I know that the government, the, some of the authorities, in order to have more control and get people to do what they, what they need to do, they want to inflate this thing a little bit. Because fear and 
fear is like the number one motivator of human beings, basically. So when you're communicating with an audience and you're trying to get them to take some action and do something and follow some rule and change their behavior, the easiest way to do it is through fear uh, and alarm, basically, or pain. We can't just well, we, we can't just whip people. Like they, that would make people move for sure. <laughs> like that would make people stay in their house if they moved out and someone whipped them. But uh, creating fear. Fear isn't bad, it's another human emotion, it's there for a reason. It, these negative emotions are there to make us take action. Um, to get away from the emotion. You know, just the way we try and get away from pain, we want to get away from emotional pain as well. So, I don't know if it's a bad thing, maybe they are inflating it a little bit, maybe they are adding on to the numbers a little bit to try and really, because they don't want it to go really, you know, go much worse but I don't know when all is said and done we'll get eventually the whole story of this will come out right now people are just doing their best and um, all we can really do is try and stay healthy and uh, the best way you can follow the rules I don't think anyone should break the rules and go to prison or whatever I don't think that's good for you and uh, and try and encourage people to, to stay healthy so that they don't overburden the NHS and the other things. So, thank you very much.